Yeah, hey, Will. Uh, I know throughout the season you said you were more focused on getting to a national championship instead of the Heisman and individual awards, but were you maybe a little bummed out that, that you didn't get an invite to New York? Yeah, that's still the kind of the, the same thing I'm on right now, just getting to a nat national championship. But, um, you know, it's God's plan. It's not my plan. So I'm just following what God's got for me, and, you know, I'm just going to keep on rolling. We good. <laughs> Bryce there. We straight. Michael Casagrande, go ahead. Are you familiar with Aiden Hutchinson's game from from Michigan? I know you guys get a lot of comparisons, but are you familiar with him? And um, yeah, I've year? seen a couple of things on like the internet and stuff like that. Uh, you know, he's a hell of a player. You know, he's very physical. He can pass the rusher. So you know, I, all credit to him. Uh, congratulations to him as well. Tony, go ahead. Well, Nick talked about yummy rat poison uh, heading into this game. Is the, the Heisman snub, is that kind of yummy rat poison for you? And do you kind of want to prove yourself to, to voters? Um, nobody, I have nothing to prove to anybody. It's all what I do. Nobody expectations higher for me. Nobody standards going to be higher for me. It's all about what I do and the expectation I have for myself. So I'm just going to keep doing what I've been doing this whole season. Nick Kelly, go ahead. Well, you talked after the game about how, how Bryce was a deserving Heisman winner. Um, what I guess what would your pitch be as to why he, he should win the Heisman? You know, if you just go back and watch the whole season from beginning to right now, Bryce is very smart, very instinctive. He can make plays even in the toughest situations. You know, he can get away from uh, getting sacked and everything. And his preparation the whole week and his leadership skills, I think that's what it takes, you know, just being a leader, a uh, vocal leader, showing people what it is to do the right way. Um, he comes to work hard. He never slacks. And I think that's why he should be where he is. And um, obviously, he's there. So that's why I think that. Mike Rodak, go ahead. Yeah, I think you were in Charlotte last night um, for the Nagurski. Just when did you find out about the Heisman finalists? And were, was that during that whole uh, banquet that you were at? It was kind of like right before I found out. So yeah, it was going on while I was there. Just yeah. to, I guess, follow up on that, just what was it like to be at that banquet and, and to win the Nagurski? You know, it meant everything. You know, he was a hard player a really hard player. His story and everything of how he became the man he was and the person he was and the people he impacted. I mean, and the people who won that award before me, it's a tremendous blessing and I'm happy that I was a, I was able to win that award and it means the world to me. Charlie, go ahead. At the banquet on, on Sunday, uh, your teammates recognized you as not only a team captain, but the most inspiring player. Just I know individual accolades may not be something you focus on, but what does it mean to for those two things to, to gain those, given that your teammates vote on them? You know, I think it means a lot. Um, I have to stand here to say that I am that person because of my teammates. Um, just allowing them to trust me and, you know, just seeing how I work every day and everything like that, I just give all credit to them because, you know, they push me and help me be better every day as, as long as my coaches and my parents. So, I mean, just for them to acknowledge that, it means a lot to me. Ivan Mizell, go ahead. Hey, Will, what's the most amazing thing you've seen Bryce do either during the week or on Saturday? Is there a play that sticks out in your head? Bryce has so many plays during the week, it's kind of hard because, like, I, don't, I did an interview not too long ago, and I was telling the media that he has everything, every quarterback we see. He can run, he can pass, he can extend plays with his arms, he can do everything. So in practice, you're going to see every type of QB there is in the world, a running quarterback, a passing quarterback, everything. He fakes you out. He makes you jump when you're not supposed to. I remember um, – Coach Saban said something, one of the D-linemen. He said it's not basketball because uh, Bryce had made him jump in the air like we was playing basketball. That's one moment um, in the game, probably in the Auburn drive. That's probably one, like, historical things I've ever seen before. And how he kept his composure and everything like that, it was great. Do you usually watch the offense? I mean, where were you for that Auburn drive? Oh, I was right on the sideline watching the game, of course. You, I mean, you, you try to watch the game. You're not back there resting or anything like that. Oh, at this point in time, we was all up watching the game. But if it was just like a normal offensive drive or something like that, we all sit down and talk as a defense just to make sure everything's going good. Steven, go ahead. Will, you talked about all the, the young bulls that went out there and, and played their, their game during the SEC championship. But in practice, what has you impressed the most about Seth McLaughlin on the offensive line? You know, um, I actually 
I remember stuff from high school, and me and him used to always talk and see if we was going to ever go against each other because he was in the same classification I was. And I always knew Seth had a little scrappiness in him. He wasn't no pushover. He was going to have a little scrappiness in him. And I, it's still in him. And he got his opportunity to go show the world what he can do. And, you know, I'm super proud of him. He's been doing the same thing since he got here. He's been scrappy. He fights hard and everything like that. So just to see him go out there and be a good dominant center and step in in a role at a critical time like that, I'm very proud of him. Tony, go ahead. Well, you've been calling on the defense to kind of show that that drive, that that improvement they kind of have over the last month. What have, what have you seen? Is this your full potential on, on defense? You know, it's still room for improvement. But what I can say is we have been playing pretty good defense. And what I was stressing to you guys um, earlier this season, I feel like it's starting to click and we're starting to get there. And our best ball is still a hell of, uh, ahead of us. Casagrande, go ahead. Come on, mouth. Teacher would kill yeah, too, me. If I could, um, have you ever messed up in practice and hit Bryce uh, when he's wearing a buck jersey? One time, and I've never done it again. One time, um, we was doing a two-minute drill, and I swore I didn't hit Bryce. But it's kind of hard when you're a passionate rusher. And, huh? When you're rushing the passer. Oh, excuse me. When you're rushing the passer, and you're going full speed, and you're trying to stop. But it's like your natural instinct to put your hands up. So I put my hands up one time, and he was throwing the ball, and my hand came down, I think, like, on his arm in his hand. And, like, the whole practice, it just was like, oh, is Bryce okay? And I was like, I got my coach, uh, Sal, he cussed me out. He's like, I told you, you stupid. Did it, did it. But, yeah, it's okay. We good, though. But that's the only time. So he was okay? Yeah, he was good. He was good. And after the game Saturday, you were pretty fired up. What was that moment like for you when you were, you were doing a Zoom interview? You were uh, pretty passionate. What was that moment like for you? It was very exciting. I just wanted some respect put on our name and remember that we are Alabama.